Rowan tree and red thread makes the witches time their speed. Hi, I'm Lou and this is Lily Row. And today we're out in the woods on the lookout for rowan trees. That's Sorbus acuparia, if you want it scientifically. And we're going to be looking at how to identify rowan in winter time using the SOBS acronym, which I explain more about in my how to identify trees in winter video. I'll pop the link in the description below. But basically SOBS stands for silhouette, outer bark, buds and twigs and site or habitat. So we're going to be using that to go through all those features for rowan trees. Stay tuned to the end of the video because at the end we'll be also thinking about properties, uses and folklore of the rowan tree. So let's go and see what we can find. So firstly, thinking about its silhouette, rowan tends to be quite a small, delicate tree usually single stemmed, single trunked, unless it's been coppiced or grazed by animals. Also, its trunk tends to be slender and straight and quite long, with most of its branches being higher up on the trunk. Its branches also tend to curl upwards. And in fact, even the tips of the twigs curl upwards a bit like kind of craggy fingers or, or something like that. <laughs> Its outer bark is smooth and tends to be grey to almost sometimes a shimmering goldy kind of colour. And it has very obvious horizontal lenticels marking it. Rowan's buds are alternate, but they tend to often be on these sort of fruiting spurs where there's almost kind of like a little ridgy bit of twig that sticks out prominently and then the bud sits on top of it. They are also quite a long distance apart from each other. They're not very close together when they, when they bud off. The bud itself is fairly large and conical in shape and the bud scales tend to be sort of a purplish brown colour and with white hairs. So it's got the appearance of being quite downy, quite strokeable. <laughs> The twigs are quite chunky, quite robust twigs. As I said earlier, they often curl upwards like a witch's finger and they often have an awful lot of leaf scars, certainly just under the bud where there's been lots of whirls of those lovely rowan leaves earlier in the year. In terms of sight and habitat, rowan is a pioneering hardy species that you can find in the uplands and in more extreme conditions, in poorer soils, maybe at higher altitudes than other trees. This is one of the reasons why its other common name is mountain ash. Um, mountain because it likes growing up at high altitudes and ash because its leaves are compounds and look a little bit like um, the other type of ash, Fraxis excelsior. But the mountain ash and the common ash aren't related in any way, just their common name is shared. Because of this, in the UK, you'll tend to find rowan more in north and western Britain, um, not so much in lowland areas. Um, here in Norfolk, we've got quite a lot of it because we've got very sandy soils, which are acidic. So you'll kind of find them in acidic soils. They are also quite commonly planted in gardens and parks because they're quite a very pretty tree and they don't get too big either so they're lovely red berries and their very pretty blossoms in the in the summertime are quite a favorite amongst gardeners. In terms of confusable species um, one of the main ones would be white beam which is actually in the same genus as rowan so white beam is sorbus aria and Rowan is Sorbus acuparia, so they're both Sorbuses, they're in the same genus. And white beam looks in wintertime quite a bit like um, Rowan. The twigs come off in a similar way, but the buds are green in white beam. Um, also, in terms of the bark, white beam has got a smooth 
greyish bark in younger trees, but it doesn't have these characteristic lenticels that the rowan tree does. Um, also, as white bean gets older, it kind of gets some swirly fissures in it as it gets bigger. Uh, and also in terms of habitat, white bean tends to prefer more alkaline soils, so more chalky or limestone soils, whereas your rowan will prefer your acid soils. There is also the possibility, if you just kind of look at the bark, that you could mistake rowan for hazel, um, particularly if the rowan had been grazed or coppiced and therefore was multi-stemmed, because hazel has these kind of lenticel markings on it. Um, however, there's quite a bit of difference between the two. Um, so hazel is always multi-stems, it self-coppices, so it's always got many stems, whereas rowan, like this one, tends to be single-stemmed. Um, and then hazel has alternate buds, they're closer together, they're round and smooth, green to red in colour. In fact, they're so close together, sometimes the twigs zigzag uh, a little bit. Also in winter, hazel tends to have lovely golden catkins in it as well, which is quite obvious from a distance. Um, so that's the main difference between rowan and hazel. In terms of conservation and wildlife value, as I said earlier, rowans are pioneering tree species, so it can grow in places where other trees can't. And the role of pioneering species in terms of ecology is that they kind of move in and through living there, they change the physical environment over many, many years so that other species then move in, and this is called succession. So um, the leaves, as they drop off, they decompose and adds to the richness of the soil, maybe making the soil more neutral. The root systems are drawing up the water table, binding the soil together so there's less erosion. Um, and as the conditions get more comfy or favourable, that allows other species that perhaps couldn't cope with the harsher conditions to move in and start to grow. But then what happens over time is those pioneering species like rowan um, basically can't compete with the other trees as they move in and they get out competed and so I can't live there anymore because they've made it too cushy and so they get pushed out. So um, the lovely pioneering species are very, are very giving, it's a very giving tree. <laughs> um, also in terms of wildlife value, the, the rowan, it's got these lovely creamy white flowers that's a lovely food source. Yes, and lovely nectar source for bees and insects. Yeah, do you like the flowers too? And um, in autumn, these lovely red berries, which are a particular favourite with the birds, particularly like the thrush family, like your blackbirds and your song thrush and red starts and things love the uh, rowan berries. You'll see them gobbling them down. In terms of properties and uses, rowan is a tough, fine-grained and fairly flexible wood. It's pale white to yellow grey in colour, so quite pretty as well. In terms of carving for forest school uses, um, it would be an okay wood to carve, but it is quite hard and tough, so it may be best left to more experienced or stronger tool users. Traditionally, because the wood is so tough, it was used to make cogs and also cartwheels and pulley blocks. Um, it also could be used to make bows, like as in long bows, uh, because of its flexibility. So if there wasn't any yew wood to, to use, perhaps they would have used rowan. Its berries are also edible. They're quite high in vitamin C, but they're very, very tart, very, very, very sour. And uh, you can turn them into jam, um, which traditionally was a like a jam or a, an accompaniment to game meats, apparently. In terms of folklore, there's lots of stories and magic associated with the rowan tree. It's sometimes referred to as the Lady of the Mountains, and I think because of its delicate form and its golden shimmering bark and its beautiful creamy white flowers, it has um, a feminine energy about it. Um, it's also connected to the spring festival of Imbol and the Celtic goddess Bridget, who she's a maiden goddess and 
kindles the fire of inspiration and visions, apparently. In Norse mythology, legend has it that all women were born from the rowan or the mountain ash tree, whereas all men came from the ash tree. There's also a story about the Norse god Thor who'd fallen into a fast flowing river and a rowan bent its branches over the river so he could grab onto it and climb out and so was saved. The tree has always been considered very protective, so on the bottom of its little red berries there's a five-pointed star or pentagram, which is an ancient protective symbol. Also the colour red is considered very protective. So historically rowan trees were planted outside houses for their protective qualities and particularly against witches apparently. There's also an old charm that apparently if you bind two rowan sticks together with red thread, then it's considered lucky and protective against witches. So you'd carry that charm in a pocket or around your neck for extra protection. Um, and apparently there is a Scottish saying that goes with it, which is rowan tree and red thread helps the witches time their sped. <laughs> I can't do a Scottish accent. <laughs> <laughs> Rowan tree and red thread helps the witches time their sped <laughs> or time their speed, meaning lose their speed. So, witches, watch out. Also, apparently rowan wood was the favoured wood for carving runes into and making rune sticks. And apparently the word rune might share a linguistic root to the word rowan um, because of that. Then finally, in Greek mythology, there's a story about how the maiden goddess Hebe um, lost the cup of ambrosia, uh, which was taken by demons, and an eagle was sent to retrieve it. And in the fight, the blood of the eagle dropped down to the mountainside and up sprouted the rowan trees. And that's why rowan trees have feather-like um, leaves and bright blood red berries. Um, if you're interested in that piece of story and folklore I've made up an extended version of it and done a video so I'll put a link in the description below. So now you know what to look for, do keep an eye out for those rowan trees when you're next out in the woods. Do you have a favourite activity to do with Rowan at Forest School? Do let me know in the comment sections below. If you've enjoyed this video, do give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing. And do check out some of the other videos about winter trees. I'll pop the links in the description below. And thanks for watching. Rowan with buds big and hairy protects from witches getting leery. Golden bark and red berry seeds pioneering species we give thanks rowan trees <laughs> <laughs>